want to get some uh, uh, experiment here. Uh, 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 plank on the other side. Uh, 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 Another good place. Well, hi everyone. Thanks for coming down to Broken Books on a fairly nice, actually, Monday morning. Um, it's nice to see so many people come out for such an important thing as this. Uh, something that's important to myself as a small business owner, a bookseller, and to the people standing here with me who are uh, involved in publishing companies, uh, writers, journalists, uh, and there's some political people here as well. Uh, thanks again for coming down and uh, showing your uh, support for us as book industry people and uh, your disdain for yet another aspect of this budget that is uh, not good for anyone. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Beth Follett from Peddler Press to speak a little bit about uh, the impacts that this aspect of the budget, this provincial book tax, will uh, have on us all. So if you join me in welcoming Beth Follett. Thank you everyone, and as Matt said, great turnout, um, really nice to be squeezed in here. Um, the group of us who are behind this initiative have written a letter uh, which was sent this morning to government. Copies are available here on the table, and I'm going to read our letter and then invite um, any of the, those who stand in solidarity behind the letter to add anything you might like to add, and then we'll take questions. And when we get to the question and answer part, if each of you would just say who you are and what affiliation you might have with an organization that stands in support, or if you're a writer, that'd be good. Um, it starts with a quotation from Margaret Atwood. I read for pleasure, and that is the moment I learn the most. Newfoundland and Labrador publishers, Boulder, Breakwater, Creative Book, Finker, Peddler, with Writers Alliance, Newfoundland and Labrador, Iser Books, and other NL-based organizations and writers stand united in our opposition to the provincial government's recent decision to charge provincial sales tax on books. No other Canadian province taxes books. Recent successful protests in Atlantic Canada, Prince Edward Island, and Nova Scotia against just such a proposed measure seem to have gone unheeded by this government, or worse, went unnoticed. So let us repeat. First, books are not luxury items. Stories are not commodities. No matter the genre, books contribute to the cultural well-being of a populace. To place an obstacle between books and readers is ignorant at best and unconscionable at worst. As David Wawuru of Kenya wrote under similar circumstances, quote, there is a common thread running through most of the thriving economies of the world. They achieved their successes largely with education and training, unquote. Studies across the world show that removing barriers to reading is key when it comes to economic development. Second, removing barriers to reading improves literacy rates. Literacy benefits people who want to be active in their local communities, people wanting to get into the workforce, 
and people who are already working but are faced with changing demands. And others, such as those who are accessing the justice system, those who are incarcerated. Literacy improves a populace's health and well-being. Good health improves skills, creativity, and productivity. Tax policies like this one work against literacy, health, creativity, and productivity, exacerbating the very conditions that can drive a populace into poverty. In his lecture for the UK Reading Agency, UK author Neil Gaiman said, quote, the simplest way to make sure that we raise literate children is to teach them to read and to show them that reading is a pleasurable activity. And that means, at its simplest, finding books that they enjoy, giving them access to those books, and letting them read them, unquote. Given the various cutbacks in education, if children here rely only on books available in libraries and schools, they will not be readers. Recent reports from Stats Canada indicate that just $118 per Newfoundland and Labrador household is spent on books. The proposed tax will most certainly reduce that figure. Third, book publishing, book selling, reading, and increased literacy enhance thinking and generate revenue. Taxing books has a directly adverse effect on book sales. The message from the Newfoundland and Labrador government is confusing. Let's find more money by taxing books, says one department. <laughs> and another says, let's help publishers, writers, and artists overcome the barriers they face. This is a quote. Hard times are coming, says Ursula Le Guin in her acceptance speech at the, two, at the 2014 National Book Awards. The time, hard times are coming when we'll be wanting the voices of writers who can see alternatives to how we live now, can see through our fear-stricken society and its obsessive technologies to other ways of being, and even imagine real grounds for hope." Unquote. Book tax will reduce revenue for all local publishers and booksellers, which will lead to fewer titles published per year with fewer Newfoundland and Labrador authors being published. Publishers here are deeply aware that such a tax will erode publishing and reading activity in the province. And we are worried that, as local publishing has been crucial for the national introduction of Newfoundland and Labrador authors and stories, growing awareness of Newfoundland and Labrador's cultural distinction Will, will be diminished and revenue from tourism will be reduced. Books are the building blocks for our better future. They foster the imagination, expand our understanding of the world and our place in it. They empower and comfort us and fuel a lifelong love of learning. As no single tax acts alone, but rather is linked to the web of other interactions and outcomes mentioned in this release, the publishers of Newfoundland and Labrador strongly believe this book tax will prove disastrous. We ask the Newfoundland and Labrador government to recommit to strengthening the province by repealing this regressive tax. Newfoundlanders and Labradorians deserve to have unimpeded access to reading. Anyone in this semicircle wish to add anything right now? Uh, can I go for the first one? Yeah. Are they, uh, this one?
um, we did in fact send a letter to Minister uh, Mitchell Moore, he's the Culture Minister uh, uh, this morning, asking for a meeting with uh, him and his officials, along with uh, Finance Minister Kathy Bennett. We believe that we have this, the, the data and the statistics to demonstrate that this is a highly regressive tax and, uh, and that more harm will be done than good for the province by keeping it there. I'd also like to point out that uh, of all the writers in Newfoundland Labrador were published, the majority of them are published right here by Newfoundland Publishers. And any erosion to our bottom line revenue is going to leave the less books published as our letter states. That takes more of this. Any, any person from the sale takes more of right out of the author's pocket. Mm -hmm. And the bulk of our revenue also for our sales are right here in our own province. So this is where it's going to hurt us most. So let's take some questions then. I just like to point out. I'd like to point out that uh, as a bookseller, uh, I've been here for two years. I gave up uh, teaching at the high school and junior high level. This is, you know, this is my dream for a nice while. And I mean, it's a tough business, right? The last uh, bookshop in the city, in the province, that sold only new books lasted three years or so up on uh, Signal Hill. And uh, I'm really worried this place might, you know, have the same fate. I mean. The average paperback novel or a collection of short stories sells for $19.95. With this 10% tax, you're looking at raising the price of that by about $2. Combine that with the fact that the average household in this province, as Beth just mentioned, sends about $118 per year on books, and we're going to have this new levy, this $300 levy, on a family that does not pull in a whole lot of money, accounts for about, you know, two and a half times an average household book buying capacity. That's very scary. So if you look at this, you're going to tax an average paperback book by an extra two dollars. You will tax a pack of cigarettes only by 20 cents. And we have one of the most unhealthy provinces in Canada. And the price of a Big Mac, they is the same, it shows where the priorities lie, right? Good point. My name is Lisa Moore. I'm a writer, uh, in a Newfoundland writer, and I've published books with presses here in Newfoundland, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity of doing that. Um, I was at a baby shower the other day, and uh, a lot of the little hardcover books for the babies were, you know, that was the gift, and I said, yay, because you're probably not going to be able to afford books later on if this tax comes in. I know that this government promised that they were going to look at the status of the artist, and I think they're kind of doing the exact opposite with this tax. And I can't help but feel that the budget is new and there is an opportunity to listen to people and to rescind this decision, to change it, to turn it around. And we all know what it feels like when you have a precious book and you open it in a, in a dangerous way and the spine cracks. And I think that this tax could crack the spine of literacy in Newfoundland and of publishing companies and certainly of writers. Most literature is a gift. People don't get, quite often, don't get remunerated for it in the way that they should. A lot of artists are, uh, don't make the kind of money that other people make. And um, this kind of tax is hurting artists it's hurting students, and it's hurting women who buy most fiction. So you're looking at a very vulnerable demographic when you bring in this tax. And I would really like to believe that this government is flexible enough to listen and to change those um, decisions that they've made in this budget that just don't make sense for our province. Meet Kane BOCM. Similar tax proposals were made in Nova Scotia and PEI, but after the government realized the implications, they were turned down. Why do you think our government was doing that? Well, we're hoping that this is the beginning of our government not going through with it. Uh, the reason why those governments backed off on their decisions started with uh, gatherings of publishers like this, started, started with consultation with uh, the community. 
and with information and presentations that were made today and, um, and you know, solid information that, that proved their point that this tax would, would be definitely detrimental. So we have requested a meeting with government and we're hoping that once we present our case to them that, that they too will back off on this. Tara Bradis from the Telegram. I'm wondering if one of you could speak about uh, things like the Greenfish set. I mean, we have some literary awards that are pretty lucrative here, and what kind of impact they could be seen. Well, I, I would like to speak to that. That is a peddler title. Um, won the Winter Set this year, Sarah Tilly's Duke. And I think, you know, my particular um, thinking about this tax is that everything affects everything. So if you have a book like Sarah's that wins a prize but is not affordable to the reading public in Newfoundland, that affects her, that affects me, that affects Matt, that affects the reason that Sarah made that almost gift, as Lisa says, to the public in the first place. It makes it as if it didn't ever happen. So then it makes winter set and its awards as if they don't happen. It's all connected, and, and that is very important for me to keep on saying that if you press here with the tax, everything falls apart. Mm -hmm. That's it then. Thank you so very much. And there are, um, as I said, copies of the letter here for anyone who wishes to take one away. And if anyone doesn't get one, you can ask any of us to send you one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Strangers and others, yeah. yeah. I can go pick a copy up off the shelf for you. Probably you can <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.
The vocal level, you can easily stop with a vote. Yeah. You know, yeah, well, that, that would mean people on the government side yeah. say, well, they haven't got sort of just outside of Lloyd Sands. And you can recall for division. Yeah. That means everyone has to stand up and you know, how vote. Just as a yay, no, to get it's just like, oh, cool, like, the loudest, right? But when you go for division, the seal of the comes in, and the clerk calls you your name, and you understand, and say, how you're So, we're all over there, and we're there. So, there's a few after posting, you know, I don't know if this is the government side, and the camp person is going to petition for coach from school. The principal, that means, you should build it. When I left, I was going to be a teacher, and I signed up. Yes, I'll go grab them for you. It's probably the easiest thing for me to do is grab it. Good. 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 Sorry. Sorry, you go ahead. Well, we should probably hold the. I think like, uh, Amanda, Amanda wants to take pictures. See you later. Yeah, actually, yeah. Oh, I never stop. It's busy now, for sure. I guess now, now until the house closes, you know, it's a uh, stop. Yeah. It's all fine. Uh, <laughs> jockeying for position now. I'm uh, in a busy literary calendar. It is. It is indeed. It's a lot are you going to be with the